Good morning, lovelies, or afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is you're watching this. Um, welcome back to Mama G Gear. It's Mama G here, and Rusty is uh, frolicking with the ferals. I have no idea. She's actually working. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, good morning. I haven't had my coffee yet. I just actually made it, and I had dried the hanks that I made for Lucas. These are the three that I made, and this was the extra which isn't as dark because I put it in the extra dye just to soak it up. They're pretty. Um, yeah, I'm liking them. They're pretty. They're, they're uh, light tealy blue and orangey. And the problem here is that these are for somebody, so I feel they need to be darker. I think they're too bright. So we're going to re-dye them. All right? All righty. So I retrieved the um, Caribbean blue that was a really super color and I'm gonna I grab turquoise I want to add some turquoise to it and then I'll see about redoing the orange part I want this to be a little more red and being that when I did do it here's the one that I kind of you know just using up the yarn um, or the dye this is kind of like a gray gray green that happened on here so I'm still debating because I don't decide until I just dip the yarn in you know uh, I might incorporate that in there so what I'm gonna do is put you on hold just wanted to explain what I'm doing uh, the water is getting hot and yeah you get a different view different angle uh, too lazy to go upstairs and get the other um, whatever you call those things that hold your phone to videotape and Jimmy rigged, or whatever you call that, I kind of rigged the uh, standing tripod that I use in the, the flower room, the plant room. So it's a little different of a whatever. And all right, I'm already two minutes in. I'm babbling my butt off. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to wet my hanks, add my dye, and I'll be right back. All righty, we're back. Uh, I wet the hanks. And I rolled up my sleeves, because you have to do that. And I just want to show you, hopefully you can hear me. I want to show you my new pots. I got three of these. I bought three of these. This is a six-inch pot. Holy Toledo, look at the, there's my hand. So I'm going to be able to put probably 150 hanks in each. Total exaggeration. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do next. But I was going to start with that. And I looked at his hanks and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they got so... They lightened up way more than I had wanted. Because here's, you know, from what I just showed you to this, this is it wet. That's kind of more what I'm most looking for, and it just brightened up so much. So let's do it. Let's do it, do it, do it. I, I just woke up, so I'm even more flaky than I am normally. Um, my coffee's delicious. I have uh, Hershey's creamer. Nestle's something crunch whatever and uh, hazelnut in there. It's really super good. All right, let's try the turquoise. Putting a little turquoise in there. I'm going to show you. Oh, I put a little too much, but that's all right. And then we're going to do some electric blue. Remember, always have a mask on. I'm wearing a mask. Do you hear the sarcasm? And I did notice uh, from the other one, the way the, the, the sound is, the other video, the way the sound was, you really heard me stirring. So I'm going to be more conscious of that on this counter making noise. But here's our color. Super, super, super blue. So I'm going to try to be more careful with my stirring because I think that was, that was annoying me. And I was, you know, when I was watching it to edit it, and I was like, oh... It doesn't sound like that on my end here, but it was really picking up the echo. All right, enough about that, woman. All right, so we've got pretty strong blues. I already added the citric acid and a little vinegar, and we're going to pick up our hanks. Remember, it was a little crowded in here to do this, but we've got our hanks, even them out. This angle is actually good in the respect that you could see more. You can see my messy kitchen. There's, this is all the, uh, in the back here, that's all the cubicles, and there's a whole other one 
another really tall one next to it that that has all the uh, undyed yarn that I dye. All right, ready? It's boiling. I'm gonna turn that down. Bring it all the way in. Kind of crowded. I will say that the oops, sorry. I will say that the dye. Um, gets stained on my my marble counters. I have to like majorly bleach it. And there I'm doing the overlap. I'm hoping that when I overlap that's going to be more uh, green or something. Look at that. Now look how rich that is. It would only stay like that. When it dries, it dries so light. So we're going to leave this in a little bit. And so, Lucas, it'll be a little while before you get your yarn, because now i got to re-dry all this. And I, I dry it without a fan or anything. I, maybe I'll put a fan on it to expedite it, but um, I usually just hang it, and then the way the heater, the heating system comes off the, the wall kind of blows on it a little bit. When I was using the pellet stove, I would put it in front of the pellet stove, so that would heat dry it much more quickly. But this took about two days to dry. Uh, squeezing out the blue with my space NASA gloves. All right, we're going to leave that part in a little bit. All right, I'm going to put you on hold. Gonna let that sit and have a sip of my coffee. Be right back. Oh, there's Moo. Moo Radley. He's Moo Radley from uh, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, if you didn't know the reference, who was uh, Robert Duvall's very first movie, by the way. A little trivia there for you. Um, and was very, you know, shy, and so is this guy. So he went from Monster Moo to M Monster Moo Radley. All right, hold on. All right, I put the uh, odd man out, odd man out, in here because I had a lot of blue left, and let that drip a little. And now I'm gonna resubmerge the other ones. Alrighty, I'm going to rinse these out, change the water, and uh, I'm doing it backwards. I usually use the lighter color first, but I, the, the blue is the one I really wanted to concentrate on at this point with this dye. But I'm going to change the water, uh, get that boiling, wash, or, or rinse these out a little bit, and then uh, come back, and um, we will do the other side. Alright, hold on. Yeah, just jumping in here uh, because... <laughs> You know they say watch, watch pot never boils. Well, also if you have it on high and you're cooking something and you're boiling some water and then you turn it down to a simmer, when you replace the water and put fresh cold water in a pot and don't turn the heat back on to high, it will take a much longer time to boil. Just an FYI, note to self, so on and so forth. So now I just turn it back, I turned it on high, so I'll be back in, well, we can put the, we'll put the dye in here while we're, well, I got you. While you're here, thanks for coming over and hanging out in my kitchen with me. Grab a cup of coffee. As Miss C would say, there's a, a water and all kinds of stuff, and she she makes food for you. I don't. Anyway, so we're going to add some um, deep orange, which is what we had before. We used cherry red and deep orange last time. But I'm going to uh, put way too much in there. And yes, it is smart to use gloves. You'll see, like, Thris, she always has discolored hands. I don't know if you can what I'm seeing doesn't look so bad. It looks worse in, 
looks worse in real time than it does on, on the camera. All right, and then we have the cherry red. So deep orange, cherry red. And I think what I did wrong was my impatience the last time. I really didn't let them sit long enough in the water and, you know, now I'll, I'll let, I, I let that one dip longer. It, it's looking pretty nice. I'll show you one. This is after I, I rinsed out the blue. I mean, it's going to, again, it's going to dry and, and lighten up, so it's not going to be this rich, but this is the richness I wanted. And I might not be able to recreate it, but I will say um, I'm going to dye it this time, and that's going to be it, whatever it is it is. And then Lucas, just deal with it. Like I always say, just deal with it. All right, I'm going to stir this off camera because it makes a noise. Let this boil and be right back. And I'm back. I stirred it. You're not going to be able to see under the white stuff, but can you see the, the richness of that color? It's gorgeous. And just in case you're new, and if you are new, welcome, and hope you enjoy being a part of the Yarn Alicious family. Um, this pot and this device here, this is antique or, you know, Salvation Army junk stuff. Um, those are my dad's. And my dad, this was the pot we used to take when we would go camping. And this was my dad's. I, I don't know whether this was part of camping or not. I, I don't remember that part of it. I just know that it was my dad's. Um, so that's why it looks so crappy. That's why, yes, it would be smarter to use a larger pot. But the weirdness in me, uh, sentimental fool, so to speak, uh, I like using that because not that I don't think of him otherwise, but it just makes him a part of my morning or my routine at this point. All right, enough of that babbling. Oh, we have um, a little someone climbing up behind you. Come here. Come here. Come here. It's like Pit the Kiss. Let's see if we can get a photo bomb. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Don't ruin the video. Oh, never mind. Sorry about that. I wish I knew how to fast forward. I would have fast forwarded it. I don't want to get him too close to the. This is Terror Terror Cat, and I ain't joking. He really is a terror, and he actually goes out of his way to aggravate the other animals. And, and, and he does it, you know. And, and he means to do it. You know, it's not. It's intentional. It's not. Uh, hope you can hear me when I'm over here. Oh, jeez, Louise. Okay. Trying to re, re grab the uh, yeah, that's my outfit. This is what I wear when I walk around the house leggings and shirts and so forth. I'm somewhat not really somewhat dressed, but uh, I know I'm not dropping this this video today because it takes forever to, to upload it and whatnot. But I've not been feeling well the last few days, trouble breathing, um, pains in the chest so on and so forth. And yes, I know I made a doctor's appointment, but yesterday I uh, actually was considering going for a ride to the hospital because it got worse. And then Tony and I had the same thing for lunch. So when I saw him this morning, I asked him how he was feeling yesterday and he was feeling pretty crappy. So I'm, I'm assuming that on top of how I was feeling, the crampiness and all that was part of what we had for, for lunch. It was delicious. Totally worth it. I would still eat it again. <laughs> but all right, let's dip and stop chatting. Here we go, dipping in the orange red. I'm gonna dip it all the way down. And I'm gonna go over the blue a little bit. I don't know if you can, yeah, see, you can't really see. There you go. I went over the blue a little bit because I want that connected color. I might go a little bit higher if I can. All right, so there's our rich red. That's the color that I wanted, but unfortunately it wasn't uh, happening. I feel like I need to go down a little farther. To even up the hanks. This, this part here is a little bit tough. Ah, you know, it just takes a little time and focusing on trying to keep each hank sort of even so that when you're crocheting or knitting with it that you're going to have a consistent uh, um, color change. 
or as much as possible, and I have as much as I have control over. And that's part of why I like to dip dye. Uh, I do pan dye. Uh, you know, I've done that forever too. But um, the dip dyeing, you you have that control where when you're pan dyeing. Um, the, the water blends into the other colors and so on and so forth, which is beautiful. But like when I'm doing the primary colors and making rainbows, I can have complete control over how much green there is, how much, you know, of each of the colors there are. You don't have that with dip dye, with the pan dyeing. I'm going to just squeeze And again, I'm going to let the bottom, the bottom of the hanks sit in, so there'll be a gradient there as well. Lay the hanks out. And let's turn the, heat, the water down a little bit again, and remember to turn it back up before we try to boil, oh, boil the next pot. I forgot this hank. Sorry about that, hank. And we'll give this a little bit more, too. It's so weird because the sound that this uh, spatula is making here in real time is barely noticeable. Of course, I'm more used to it and I know what's going to happen, but um, when I was editing it, I was like, wow, it sounded like a, such a loud pinging noise. All right, so we're going to let these things sit. I'm going to poke at them and make sure that the underneath is, you know, getting the color and so on and so forth. And uh, we'll be back. So hang in there, go have your sip of your coffee. Alrighty, I've got the cold water running in the sink, if that's what you're hearing. And these have been sitting for a little bit. Interesting color, I'm not quite sure what that's gonna look like dry. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is take these and put them in the sink. And now is the process of washing them with soap and water and all that kind of stuff wringing them dry, hanging them on the uh, rack, um, and then waiting, you know, waiting a day or two or more, depending, whatever, and uh, see how they turn out, which I will take a dry picture. I will take a picture of them dry. Let's word it properly. <laughs> uh, take a picture of them dry and put that in the thumbnail, perhaps, um, because I'm going to turn this off, because this is the process that takes the longest is getting all the dye out of the uh, fibers. I will just bring up, and I don't say this enough, and just in case you don't know, if you do ever get yarn from a yarn dyer like this, when you're taking care of it, don't throw it in the washing machine. Rinse it with the warm or cooler. I'm, I'm, this is me talking, not any scientific whatever, you know, but the, the warmer the water, you, you might get dye residue coming off still because it's pretty difficult to get all of the dye out. Um, so just be careful of that, mindful of that, to wash it separately in a warm to cooler water if you're going to do so. Don't throw it in the dryer because you'll have a matted mess, uh, perhaps. Depending on what the fiber contents are, it may differ very, very a little bit, but... Um, just for safeness, to be safe, just hand wash, warm to cool, gentle, um, you know, if, if it's, if the water's warmer and you're agitating the yarns, you have the potential of it felting. So that's what you're trying to avoid. And also the hotter, sudsier water will also pull some of the dye out of the fiber. So. I don't know. I just thought I'd share that because I, I don't think I've ever shared that with anybody before on here. So just in case you needed to know that, now you do. Or you flip past and you missed it and you're going to throw it in the washing machine and you're going to have a mess. Anyway, whatever. All right. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do what I have to do here and I will see you in a little bit. Bye-bye for now.